Today, we're going to be tackling the common question of where are all the native AAA games on Apple M1 based Macs? Apple M1 based Macs have been around for almost a year now. You would have thought within that time frame, more games would have been updated or ported over to M1 with native ARM64 support. This is not the case, as there is only a very small amount of native games and the majority of them are indie titles and are only available from the Mac App Store. As of August 2021, the Mac App Store is the main digital storefront where developers can ship their ARM64 applications, as it's an ARM64 application itself. But it's sadly never been a great place for receiving the latest releases or big AAA titles. The most obvious answer for the lack of AAA titles is the overly complex and resource intensive process for creating packages. For example, a package of 120 gigabytes can take almost three to four hours to create will require upwards of 400 gigabytes of temporary space and will require you to upload a complete package to the App Store every time you make a patch or a change. Steam and GOG, for example, use Delta approaches when you upload to the store, only applying the real changes. Until App Store machinery can handle 120 gigabyte packages with ease, it's very unrealistic to see huge titles there. Though there are some benefits for the App Store. Most notably, it has iCloud backup between other Apple devices, and that's awesome. But really, its biggest drawback is not having cross-play and cross-saves with other storefronts, and the Game Center subsystem is significantly lacking compared to for example, Steam or GOG infrastructure. As we all know, the majority of games you'll buy are available on third-party storefronts. Steam, the Epic Game Store, Itch.io, GOG Galaxy, and Battle.net. These storefronts are x86-64 applications and therefore run through Rosetta. You can't ship ARM applications to most of these platforms right now. For example, when Realm Forge Studios tried to ship their ARM application Space Base Startopia to Steam, Valve will try to inject an x86 dynamically linked library inside their ARM64 executable. This causes a crash when you click the play button on Steam. Most developers working with Steam and M1 have therefore decided to only ship their games as x86-64 for the time being, until Valve puts out an update. With that being said, some developers have managed to get around these issues, such as Larion Studios and Elvarels with Baldur's Gate 3 on Steam and Blizzard with World of Warcraft on Battle.net. They shipped their games with their own external launcher that opens a separate executable in the game's files, bypassing their respective storefronts interfaces. What's even more important, ARM64 lacks any Steam API support, which is super actively used by games like multiplayer, achievements, leaderboards, chats, etc. Until Valve, Epic Games, Blizzard, and GOG, and so on, update their storefronts, expect most new games on Mac to not be native, and run through Rosetta. It can also be a little bit complicated on knowing how to create a native application on M1, at first. For games to be officially native on M1, applications must support ARM64 architecture, and have to be compiled with Xcode 12 or later. You can use Metal 1.2 and later. DirectX and Vulkan are the most popular graphics APIs for Windows PC gaming. OpenGL and OpenCL are also used on Mac and Windows, but that API has not been updated in a long time. 
While Metal is a very mature API, most developers, especially AAA companies, are just not interested in learning how to use Metal for a platform with such a small gaming audience in the first place. It's true though, starting a new project for ARM64 is now easier than ever as more engines are being updated for M1. A few games have their own internal proprietary game engine too that can be built around ARM such as Towers of Everland on Apple Arcade. It's updating an old engine that can be difficult. For example, here is Unity's interactive demo, Book of the Dead, running on M1 at 1080p max settings with an average 30 FPS. It was created by Unity and collaborated on by the Apple Metal engineering team in 2019 made under Unity 2018.2.0 F2, it is an x86-64 app with Metal 2.1 support. If you want to update the engine to Unity 2020.2, the bare minimum to ship an ARM64 application, you will come to realize it's not as simple as just updating the engine to the latest version. That will cause problems. You'd have to make sure the app supports both mono and intermediate language to C++ scripting backends, update the rendering pipeline, recompile any native plugins, and so on. Then you'd have to test the game to see if it actually performs well. To help with these issues, Apple introduced Rosetta 2. It gives developers time to create a native binary for their x86-64 apps. Let's have a look at fairly recent AAA games running under Rosetta 2. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is powered by Metal 2.2, gets around 30 FPS at 1080p medium settings. Dying Light, which is powered by OpenGL, gets 40 to 50 FPS at 1080p high settings. Metro Exodus, with Molten VK support through Metal 2.3, gets 30 to 50 FPS at 1080p medium settings. Rosetta 2 will install an ARM emulated version of an x86-64 app. This is emulation at install time and not runtime. Keep in mind, many think Rosetta is a substitute for creating native versions of their app on M1. But don't forget, eventually Apple will depreciate x86-64, but this won't be for a long, long time. Technically, you can get around all of this by supporting Molten VK and Molten GL, which allows Vulkan or OpenGL applications to run on top of Metal. But almost all games using Molten are optimized for Intel Max. I've only found one ARM64 game with Molten VK support, and that is GZ Doom. In one of my previous videos, I showcased how Code Weavers brought Molten VK support to their Microsoft Windows compatibility layer crossover. Molten VK on crossover allows games with DirectX and Vulkan support also to run on top of Metal. That being said, supporting Molten VK by any means might behave strangely or show inconsistent results with shaders especially. The other issue with getting native games on M1 is with Apple's new unified memory architecture. Apple really should have made the baseline memory on M1 16 gigabytes and the max 32. Eight gigabytes is just not enough for modern AAA games. Just look at Baldur's Gate 3 which was recently updated as an ARM64 application. When optimized well, a native ARM64 application can have better CPU and GPU performance. But at the same time, this can lead to higher memory requirements. It now requires 10 gigabytes of unified memory. So it's unplayable in some scenes on M1 based Macs with only eight gigabytes of memory. Right now, there are a number of technical limitations that get in the way of shipping native applications to Mac, but developers have always found ways to get around such hurdles on other gaming platforms. At the end of the day, if the audience is so small in the first place, 
working on a native build is often just not worth it. I think it falls to us to try and make M1 look more enticing to developers. You can help by asking devs to update their existing Intel Mac ports, or when devs announce new games, inquire if they're working on a native Mac version. In many cases, Mac is just not in their thoughts and ask Valve and other storefronts to update their applications. Anyways, I'd be interested to know what you guys think in the comments. Why do you think there are hardly any native M1 games so far? I hope this video was educational for you and most importantly, developers interested in Apple Silicon. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like as it was a massive, massive project to work on and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything Apple M1 gaming related. My name is Dewey and thanks for watching.